next reader, Kathleen McKinney Harris, is a fifth generation native New Yorker. Her father wrote a bad check to get her sprung from the, the maternity ward when she was born. <laughs> Kathleen McKinney Harris. In retrospect, it may not have been the best idea for two women traveling alone in Spain to hike into the woods to find something named the Pont del Diablo, the Devil's Bridge. But we were young, and when you're young, you think you're immortal. Besides, my traveling companion, my college roommate Madge and I were native New Yorkers, and we thought we could survive anything. We nearly proved ourselves very, very wrong. In 1991, Madge and I studied abroad in London and went to Spain for spring break. We visited Madrid, Barcelona, and Tarragona to see an ancient Roman aqueduct called the Devil's Bridge, named for the legend of a fair lady who bet her soul with the devil just to cross the fucking bridge and lost. Mind you, this was also in ancient history before cell phones or the internet when we used crude tools like fold-out maps and pay phones. No one knew where we were or could track us. We were Gen X kids. This was normal. We hiked the long dusty trail and arrived at the base of the majestic aqueduct. It was marvelous. Just us and the stacked stones. Just us and antiquity, just us and our pride at being capable, independent women who had gotten there to see it. We were about to climb the aqueduct, nearly 90 feet high, when we heard something behind us. We turned to see a huge, hulking man with the waistband of his John Wayne Gacy-style sweatpants down, jerking off as he approached us. I thought I saw a knife in his other hand. He was trying to trap us on the aqueduct. He was trying to do something that would make us very, very mortal. Somehow, we outran him. I kept yelling, go, 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 to Madge. We ran faster than we had ever run for six trains or presidential fitness tests. My lungs and my thighs were liquid fire. My will to live superseded everything. Go, go, go. When we reached the main road, we were sweaty and panting and pissed. And the first thing we did was light cigarettes because we were pretentious 20-year-olds even though we were gasping for breath. My friends saw a sign that read Taberna and Comida, but my Irish eyes only understood the three neon letters blinking beneath it, B-A-R, so we went there. Madge was half Sephardic Jew and normally did the translating, but she was catatonic. She was just so fucking done with the injustice of being a woman. When the waitress came to our table, Madge couldn't speak, so I had to be the one to order with my Irish mouth. Dos servicios, por favor, I said haltingly. Oh no, you? Oh no, she? The waitress said. No, that's not what I meant. Uh, what does it mean to say me? Uh, pardon me, pardon me. Uh, dos, dos para mi, dos para mi. Two beers, two beers, two beers just for me. I was still angry, beating my chest like an agitated silverback. At that, Madge snapped out of her coma. I'll have what she's having, she said. The waitress beamed. I'll have what she's having? Ah, Harry knows Sally, yes? Ah. New York, New York, Magruan the morning sex lady, I'll have what she's out, ah, she's great. And she walked away, cackling. As they say, you can take the girl out of New York, but I can't say in Spanish how many beers we had that day, but we had a lot. We didn't call the police, we didn't report the incident, we just tucked it away and kept going like every other woman does. 30 years later, I brought my daughter to the airport so she could study abroad in London. There are still so many devil's bridges for women to cross, built not just by demons, but by lecherous strangers and absent fathers, Supreme Court justices, and presidents. I hugged my daughter for far too long, whispered in her ear once more to be smart and be safe. And when she left, my prayer for her was this, go and get your beautiful life. May your will to live supersede everything.